the internet. I don't have a copy of it. I get it to you, but it's on the internet. It's called the Clinton Chronicles. But anyway, Kathy Ferguson was the strange wife of Danny Ferguson, who had been the security guard and helped procure women for Bill Clinton when he was governor of Arkansas. So anyway, what happened as a result of this deal is she's a, a registered nurse, but she's working as a receptionist at Memorial Hospital over here in North Little Rock, and she was separated from him, getting a divorce, and engaged to a police officer with the Sherwood Police Department. Okay, as a result of her starting to talk to the news media about, they called it Trooper Gate, Arkansas State Troopers procuring women for Clinton yeah. when he was governor. As a result of this, she was right-handed. She allegedly shot herself while the Secret Service investigated me for eight hours over this deal. But any, I didn't do it, but I was friends with her over what I was telling the media and stuff about it, you know, because they didn't want it to get out. But anyway, she was a right-handed person. She shot herself in the back. She never owned a firearm in her life, was engaged to a Sherwood policeman. Can you still hear me? Yes. Okay, there's a guy in the background sawing on my house. But anyway, she shot herself in the back, left-hand side of the head, and killed herself, good and dead. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm saying it's because they were afraid she knew too much was going to talk, so the Secret Service had her murdered. But anyway, Kathy Ferguson is number 52 on the Clinton Chronicles of people that were murdered by the Clinton group in order to keep him in power and not get him disgraced. But she had had an affair with Clinton, and was ashamed of it, and they was afraid she'd talk about it, so they, the Secret Service just flat-ass murdered her, and I told them they did a really bad job, because the deal is, she was right-handed, and they never owned a firearm in her life, and a nurse, and shot herself in the back left-hand side of the head. Nurses have a key to a medicine cabinet, all they gotta do is take an overdose and go out the easy way. You see what I'm saying? Right. They don't, nurses do not, especially she had been a model and a beauty queen when she was young, People that are models never shoot themselves in the face or head. Very seldom shoot themselves in the face or head, Don. But that's just one of the things that the, most of people in America just don't know about because the government don't want to advertise what happened and don't want, does not want the truth to get out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is there any other questions? Uh, yes, you had mentioned this Gregory Holt, uh, that uh, he was... <clears throat> I didn't quite catch it. Was he was hired? Okay, he was working undercover for the government, and what they did with him, the government, he 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 did things for deals for the government too, just like I did. But I don't think he was as good as I was. But anyway, Gregory Holt, they had he converted to the Muslim religion in order to get in with the Muslims in Arkansas. He was involved recently in the plot to blow up the Arkansas State. You know, when the war started, there was a group of Muslims that were going to blow up the Arkansas State Capitol. They did not let it happen. You see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. But he got in with the Muslim and claimed some of the Muslim leaders. They didn't let it happen. But see, some things they let happen and some things they don't let happen. Right. But anyway, he got in with the Muslims, joined the Muslim center over in Little Rock, became a Muslim, convinced him that he was a Muslim. And what he did, he was involved with the people that were planning to blow up the Arkansas State Capitol and the TCBY building and the Stevens building here in Little Rock when the war opened up. But they didn't want those three buildings blown up or destroyed or any kind of toxic substance leaked in them. So the people that he, he framed some people and got them put in jail for this deal and the other people fled and left the country when they found out the fix was in he was about to get them. You see what I'm saying? Right. Anyway, right now I don't know where he's at. I think the government's got him and put him in jail or framed him or something because I haven't been able to get in touch with him recently. So. God only knows where he's gone, or he might be in a shallow grave somewhere. Right, you said they wanted him to... Well, anyway, he was one of the guys that they asked him personally to go and get in with the Tony Alamo, this is a few years ago, to get in with the Alamo Foundation and put pornography on Tony Alamo's computer, is what they specifically wanted him to do, because he's a computer geek type guy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What about... Uh... That would, that would be just to frame him and to set him up and to malign him. Uh, you had mentioned something about uh, uh, assassination right. plot against Pastor Lama. That's correct. But I'm saying, okay, for example, there's a guy called the Black Santa Claus here in, in Little Rock in the uh, Arkansas area. I forgot what his real name is, but they call him the Black Santa Claus. Oh, and Robert St. McIntosh is his real name. And he's non-political now, but anyway, when he was very political and against Clinton, okay, what they did with him is 
they got a guy who was an ex Green Beret from, that served in Vietnam who was a sniper, and, and they furnished him with a weapon and a lot of money. But the guy was kind of goofy after Vietnam and stuff. His name was uh, Gary Smith, was his real name. He was the Green Beret in Vietnam, and I knew the guy. And they fixed him up and wanted him to assassinate Robert Say McIntosh, but he did not go. They gave him a lot of money up front for the deal, but he didn't follow through on the deal and, you know, fled up to the Ozarks somewhere. I don't know where he's at or what he's doing now. But anyway, the government was real up there. He might be in some government prison somewhere or something now. But anyway, they furnished him with a weapon and gave him a lot of money and wanted to assassinate this guy just because he was writing articles against Clinton when Clinton was in power. But anyway, one thing they did to help shut him up also is his son was involved in drugs. So they busted his son for drugs, this black guy over in little of the black Santa Claus. And then what they did, when everybody was at the Clinton inauguration, the guy, Mr. Jewell, who was a black guy who was the acting governor, under the condition that Robert Say McIntosh, when they couldn't get him assassinated and were unsuccessful at it three different times, government, what they did, they got him, his son, for drugs, and they told him, and he was doing 20 or 40 years, and they told him they were giving him an Arkansas governor's pardon if he was just quit going around, you know, like your people go around and put things on cars, on, on I think he got it from your group of people, you go put things under the windshield wipers on automobiles and stuff, do some of your literature in some parking lots and stuff. Right. He was doing the same thing around the federal building downtown Little Rock, but it was anti-Clinton stuff, and it was factual information about things that Clinton had done. So they didn't want him doing that, so they made a deal with him if he'd shut up and quit publishing stuff about Clinton. That his son was doing 20 or 40 years, had been down in prison for a year. They let him go under the condition that he quit talking about Clinton. You see what I'm saying? Right. How it works? Mm-hmm. It's a very corrupt system, Don. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you. Oh, okay. I said, okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Huh? I can I can't hear you. Are you still there? Yeah, can you hear me now? No, I'm, I'm having trouble hearing you. Hello? Don. Yeah. I am just barely can hear you. Okay. Can you hear me now? No, uh, you're real weak. My hearing's not all that great. I've been around too many explosions and stuff and gunfire. But I can I can barely hear you. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, now I can hear you better. I don't know what happened. Okay. It might be, my, it might be the battery in my phone. I'm on one of these walk-around phones and walking around my house. A guy's construction working on it, and I'm trying to stay out of his way. It might be this phone the battery getting weak on it. Right. Okay. But anyway, is there anything else you'd like to ask me? Yeah, I was wondering, do you have any other uh, tapes or, or documentation, any other information that could be used to document these things? I mean, I believe you 100%. Right. You know, and I'll try to help you out and get things. I had some. I had a couple of undercover tapes, but I don't know whether I still got them or some of some of the undercover deals I did. Right. Uh, the, you know, the actual tapes of the deal and the transcripts of the deals I did, but I don't know whether I still got them or not, but I'll look and see. But I'm going to just send you... Like I said, you're welcome to come here and talk to me. I'm going to write a letter right now and take it to the post office and write your name and Tony Alamo's name on it and just send you a little excerpt of some of the information I've got. You know what I'm saying? Right. To show you that I'm on the legit. And you can check it out. For example, when I joined the Klan undercover for the government, I had the best intentions now. I joined it 9.02 a.m. April the 19th, 1990. Why did I join up at 9.02 a.m. April the 19th? Do you know? No. Okay. See, they don't want to tell the American people that. That's a historic fact. The first day of the first shot of the first battle of the American Revolution. Okay. What day did they execute Richard Wayne Snell on? April the 19th, 1995. But the last request Richard Wayne Snell had when he got up that morning, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you this letter, and then I'm going to try to get a copy of this tape made, this tape you know, the 30-minute BBC tape. Right. And get a copy. The BBC documented and did everything on it. You know, you know how the BBC is. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to send this letter today, and then I'm going to try to get a copy of this tape and send it to Don, S-W-E-A-T? That's right. Okay. And try to send it to Don Sweet in care of this. Is it all right if I send it to this post office box now, Ma? Yes, that would be fine. If I send it to you, right? 
Yeah, or you could send it uh, overnight, or someone could maybe pick it up. If, uh, where are you at? In Little Rock?